side. side. Oh, I burped. Ah! Ha ha! Party Deet. side. I did it. I opened the pretzels. Welcome to the B side. You did it. You did it. Courtney. Welcome to the B side. You're the so best. what I've just like <laughs> you should, like you're the best to yourself. To yourself. Yeah. I'm the best around. Nothing's gonna so ever keep, going keep every me day, down. Y'all. So I Be just subjected to everybody to tomato aspic for the first time in their lives. Maybe. Have you ever had tomato aspic? No, that was neither have I. Have you? No. No. So But I did learn about it today. From that guy you had me follow, this guy's a long hair and the glasses, the tops like this, and he's real southern. From Laurel, he's, Mississippi. He's like, let's talk about salad. <laughs> I love the way he talks, All man. You do have a salad is you just mix more than two ingredients. Oh, my God. Well, let's start in alphabetical order. Name. <gasps> Ambrosia. <gasps> Ambrosia. Ambrosia. So yes. he just goes through all this. And one cool was with tomato marshmallows. I can't fucking coconut. remember his name, but I will put a link to him. Oh, he's hilarious. He is so good. I'll, I'll, I'll find him in a minute. Laurel, Mississippi. He's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So I decided I wanted to, I wanted to restart our Jello taste test kitchen. Yes. And, uh, Thank because you. It was my turn and I had been putting it off for a long time. Because what I really want to do is hit hard on the like the the shrimp and salmon ones, but I knew mm. that I couldn't do that couldn't in good conscience. That way. Yeah. And I know how much everybody loves tomatoes, including Courtney, who doesn't like this Jello I taste love test challenge. Tomatoes. I don't like and the Bloody Marys. And so I was like, I'm going to make something from this recipe book, which I will. I I can't really share a link with you because I found it in the thrift store, but I'm pretty sure it was from either a Texas or a Tennessee mom. Who wrote in this and and in the book that right next to it is in pencil written the word good with like exclamation uh, point. And I those are the books. ones I'm trying to pick out. Yes. <laughs> so like she that. had written that next to this and it was one cup of hot tomato uh, juice. And then you mix one three ounce pack or 3.2 ounce pack of lemon jello into the hot tomato juice. You pour in one cup of cold tomato juice. And you add, I think, two tablespoons of prepared horseradish. Let's see. A ta- a tea- no, two teaspoons of prepared horseradish, a teaspoon of salt, and uh, two teaspoons of grated onion. It was good flavor. It was really good. And you serve it with a sauce that is made of a quarter cup, no, a half cup of sour cream, a half cup of mayonnaise, and a quarter cup of chili sauce all mixed together, which I would serve on oh my God, practically that. anything. Like, yeah, crackers. Yeah, for real. So I mean, good. like, I'm going to live by that for the future. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, seriously. Your effort to make it something I would like because I do like all the things you just said. Yeah. It is still the jello. texture. <laughs> I can't, like, I mean, mm, I want it to be a liquid or a solid, but I don't like this in between. Like Unless I'm very sick or have to have a colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh my me. God, Courtney so, just connected it a, to a colonoscopy. Fair weather friend. Or I'm jello. sorry, ma'am. <laughs> like, I only um, love you when I have to. I never buy <laughs> jello. I never. <laughs> when I say never, unless I'm having a colonoscopy, <laughs> it's the last time I bought jello. For the last 10 years. <laughs> I kind of, you know, and I imagine this is probably because I've like had to raise two children in that in that span. I probably wouldn't have made any jello in that time if it hadn't been for the fact that I've raised two children in that span. Exactly, exactly. But because I have, I've eaten a lot of jello that my children forgot I made. So like, I don't know. I, I bet they wouldn't like this jello. Oh my God. I bet they would hate it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I could even get them like by force to try this. Hey, jello. my mama loves jello. She buys those jello, whatever snack packs every time she the does ones, a Walmart order. Oh my gosh. My <laughs> kids love eating those. They love eating them without spoons because, with apparently jello, applesauce, just, and pudding, anything that comes in a little cup, squeeze if you them just, out of the cup. Yeah. If you just pull the cup, like foil back a little bit, then you can like kind of suck it all up easily. And it's funny all to right. them. Flavor gets. A flavor up. bonus because I was like I'm going for Bloody Mary here. It didn't have enough spice in it for Bloody Mary. Well, like but... Patrice said when we were tasting it, which we did do a video of. Um, I'm putting it on our Patreon page. Oh my lord, there's no. I'll telling. put the video of the making of it on there too. If there were something else solid with it, like I could eat it on a plate with other things, like just mm-hmm. me taking a big old spoonful of gelatinous tomato is <laughs> gelatinous goo horse horse hooves. 
I could tell there was horseradish in it. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh. horseradish and horse tubes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so they funny. really still make Jello with that. They uh, do actually. I, I believe that's what gelatin is still made of. I think they're synthetic, like some, but I really do think that's still a, a component of all gelatin. I'm not sure. I really am just talking out my ass, to oh, well, be honest. I, mean, I can say it with as much authority as you want. No, that sounds good. Sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to look we'll have to look that up and then like correct ourselves. Or not. Next Whatever. Time. You but. guys can look it up too. You have Google. Yeah. The Google. Instagram Stop person being so lazy. is Landon Bryant. Landon, he, yes. Uh, that's not the name I expected. No, Landon Talk. Landon talks. His, um, yes. Yeah, I need to because I haven't looked at that. I need to look at that. Oh my god, this he is, is amazing. He, he looks like Jesus. He, he, looks, look, like he Jesus. looks like redneck Jesus, <laughs> but not redneck. He's more country. He's country, country Jesus. Jesus, and oh my god, he is on point with all the things. Oh yeah, he's an elementary school art teacher. <laughs> yeah, oh, his I love his him then. wife is like an artist. And they're from Laurel, Mississippi, and they're good friends with the couple that does all the HGTV yeah, like, makeover stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's we also went to from Laurel, Laurel on our way to yeah, um, New Orleans. We, we, yeah, we drive Let's through Laurel. Get with them, because you know what? Finster. All artists should know about Finster's Paradise Garden. Maybe I'll talk about that soon. Okay. It's in Georgia. We'll, we'll talk about that soon. That sounds a lot better than talking about the Daybells. And, and the murder. Let's get with him on our way to New Orleans for our birthdays again. Yeah. <laughs> only on your birthday. We can't go to New Orleans on our birthday. Oh, no. Actually, it's a, we can it's probably too only go to our... Swampy, yeah. hell. Oh, my God. Everything's a swampy, soupy hell at our birthdays. Piss. Yeah. <laughs> Armpits and piss. Oh, it's gross oh, in the know. summer. Oh, yeah. The, like, you smell urine oh. blocked. Away. And you smell yourself. I went the whole for my time. birthday once, mm-hmm. and it was uh, that was bad. It's yeah. so bad. February, great. Always Patrice's birthday. Always, always. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> not July and August. No, no, not we'll our make birthdays. the path now that I am there. Let's go to Alaska for. Let's go to Alaska for Alaska. our birthdays. Okay, for our birthdays. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, not for her birthday. Not for her birthday. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> too like Opposite. frozen. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Do you want more Strange South every week? We can help. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can join our Facebook fan group, Fans of the Strange South Podcast, to keep the chat going with our whole creepy community. Do you have a story idea for us, or a story of your own to share? Email us at stories at thestrangesouth.com. Plus, if you join our Patreon, you not only help support the podcast, you get free swag, extras, exclusives, and a discount on merch. You can find links to all these things on our website, thestrangesouth.com, along with photos, links, and show notes from every episode. Strange South t-shirts, mugs, stickers, and other goodies. See you there. All right, so I do have for the B-side kind of a continuation of my story a little bit. And it is more of kind of a now that we know that Lori and Chad, although we've already suspected it, um, are, you know, dirty motherfuckers. Exactly. We have, you know, a timeline of actually what happened and a lot of the text. And again, uh, there's so much information because they fucking didn't care because they were like preparing for the apocalypse and once that happened nothing would matter so covering tracks and anything like that they just didn't care they didn't i really don't no think that effort. they were preparing for the apocalypse i don't think either. so either i really think that they are you know sociopath antisocial personality disorder and like just got everybody out of the way that was keeping them from being together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they really don't Ultimately believe that. Ultimately, very selfish. It if reminds living... me of the new episode of Righteous Gemstones. Oh, I need to. Yeah. I haven't watched the new uh, season at all. A little bit. They're not that sociopathic, but this idea of like, we're going to use our religion to like just forward our own personal agenda is all mm-hmm. it is. Well, yeah. Which is to be a lot like to do whatever you want. Right. Exactly. Make money. Usually they don't even seem to be trying to make money off of it though. They're no, just well, murdering their families. But yeah. To get their life insurance to mm-hmm. make yeah, money. I was going to say. Sure. The life insurance. I forgot so about that. what they did, Tammy's life insurance, which he took out like a huge abnormal chunk because she was the only one working at the time right before her death and then he called like Lori did like the next day um 
saying like you know to collect on it mm. and everything was like four hundred thousand dollars. He got four hundred thousand dollars from a public school librarian oh, wow. life insurance, and that's what they used to get married and go to Hawaii. So I'm just going to run down a timeline now that we know that came out since the trial and some text messages that we also know about since the trial. And I believe it probably took the full two years from the time that they were arrested till the trial to get all of this information together and organized. And because there's just so fucking much of it. And plus COVID Mm. was happening during this time, which wasn't the apocalypse, but, you know, felt like it felt like it. So on July 11th of 2019, as we already know, Charles Vallow was killed by Alex Cox. Alex never did do CPR on Charles like the uh, 911 people asked him to do. He also was shot twice in the chest. And then once he was like either dead or dying on the floor, was shot twice in the back Mm. when he was down. So July 26, Lori texted Chad. I not I'm sorry, Chad texted Lori. I'm sorry. I am a grown up version of Harry Potter who has lived with the Dudleys in his little space under the stairs. Every few weeks I get to escape and have amazing adventures with my goddess lover, but then I have to return to my place under the stairs feeling trapped, but I sense permanent freedom is coming. So this is like a couple of weeks after Charles was killed. And he's still married to Tammy at this point. A few days. Terrible, terrible reference. That was not Harry romantic Potter at all. didn't have a lover. That's gross. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, July 29th, Chad also texts to Lori, one question, do you want me? Oh, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> at this time that Chad's texting Lori, to put this in context, Lori is like on a day trip with JJ and her niece and her niece's um, children. And Chad texted her and she must have complained to him. She's like, do you want me to cause pain yet to the two threes you're riding with? So threes are like the system or the zombie numbers. JJ was a three, which is like almost a zombie or has transformed. And then probably one of the other children because they weren't behaving. How immature is this? You know. Like, that's the thing that really gets me is like, oh, this is a middle school. Middle You nailed it. System. Oh, you nailed it. OK, so Lori says probably hold off on them will arrive. This is just what I'm reading. It's not good texting. Y'all. Uh, they will be mistake to deal with. But I'll text you if they start acting up and we can zap them. All right. That's what you do. <laughs> because that's what you do. You zap them. So the end of July, July 30th. Uh, 2019, Chad texts to Lori, I got the inspiration to go back to my original death percentages that helped us track Charles, a.k.a. Ned, etc. Tammy, his wife, is very close. Her percentage has fallen steadily since Hiplos left. I don't know who the hell Hiplos is. It is encouraging. And then in August 10th, a month after Alex murdered Charles, Lori texts Chad, we just have to wait for it to be carried out. I feel lost, like I should be doing something to help. Which when I was like typing this out and finding this, I had like a huge deja vu. Like I had like... Have you typed this to (laughs) someone? Yeah, it was like the exact statement or something. And Chad Daybell, I was like, I had that feeling like I've done this before. It was really weird. Wait, you? Yeah, you know, deja vu is like you're in this moment where you t- you type something. Not about like the exact thing she means. Like she's typed. It. Like, like she like, was typing it. I was typing it and I remember like oh, typing okay. it out. I thought you were saying you like basically were like looking to kill somebody. I <laughs> <laughs> will not talk about that right now. I don't think Marlea has deja vus like we do. <gasps> oh, what? Not this. I do. No, I do. You do? I do. I've like had those some very really like, weird, serious stage of I mean, before. but mine are usually weird. Like I've lived this bullshit like this though. Oh, no, where mine I'm are like, too. Okay, like, like, like completely oh, random stuff. Yeah. It's like why? It's not like some big life yeah. event. Uh-huh. It's just yeah. some random. You turn a corner and you're like, I've done that this tree looks very like. We're typing that in your phone yeah. or on yeah, your yeah. thing. And like, oh, I've typed this before. 
Right. Oh yeah, I did try to murder someone. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, what I had missed was the we're removing from like we're removing from the actual content to the context. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay, Chad also texted. There's a plan being orchestrated for the children. Oh, I wow. was shown last night how to fit together, but it has been taken from my mind. Of course, you are doing everything right, my love. The Lord told me she is right on track. He said to keep resolving the, he says, uh, telestials, which is a Mormonism of pertaining to the lowest degree of glory. I don't know. Uh, the, Not te- the celestials, but the, the telestials. telestials issues. So you are unencumbered and fully free. And Lori replies, feels good. And then she starts talking about JJ. I mean, the text messages are just so fucked up. The, she starts talking about JJ, who, you know, they give their supposed demons or whatever different names, like Charles was Ned. I think JJ's must have been Blake. And she's like, JJ is talking to the real Blake, getting close. I sense he was barely attached to his body. And then Chad says, you are so incredible in many ways. Your, ah. your mission has barely begun. And then Lori says, as long as it ends with you, it's all good. Oh, my God. I want to vomit. I know. I know. And then Chad says, oh, sorry. That was the whole pain thing. Ba, ba, ba. All right. Okay, so like, I keep on thinking, like, okay, my goal for my children is to keep them attached enough in reality so that they recognize the absolute bullshit that is this. Yes. God help! Let's yeah. please do that. Oh my God! And and I mean, think about Tali, who is sixteen at this time, and all of these adults, every single adult that she is around since her stepfather Charles is not based in reality yeah. they are all following chad they all believe they're part of the 144 they all believe that people have demons in them that have they had like little rituals and and it all it seemed like she got to live long probably because mm-hmm. she was like what the hell is going and she on? was rebellious yeah. and she of course knew she was because she got moved from a functional family to this bullshit and she mm-hmm. was 16 going what is going on i bet I mean, you know, that's why she went, but first. she loved her. Yeah, but she loved her mother and she wanted like she had like that whole thing where she wanted to, you know, please her mother. And but her mother was like gaslighting the whole time and trying to get rid of her so that she could go fuck her boyfriend. I mean, you could have fucked her boyfriend anyway. Right. Right. Exactly. Like, it's just I don't. Oh, I, I keep getting hum- hung up on like the uh, like the absence of grief. And maybe it's there. Oh, no, maybe no. It's just There's not no in grief. Story, but I'm like, there is absence. How could there be a complete of absence of grief without sociopath? There like- are. They have to be. Okay, but let me tell you this: the absence of grief. Obviously, Lori and Chad, no grief whatsoever. No, no repentance. No um, empathy. Nothing. A large part of the family is the same way. So hold on. Let me just get there. So August 7th, Lori's saying she's asleep. She's talking about Tali. She put a bunch of holes in the wall and the door. Definitely demons helping her. Probably 1,000. I mean, all teenagers have. Yeah. And Chad says, (laughs) Chad says, Mel, talking about Melanie, wants to come up there tomorrow. But I said uh, next Thursday. So Lori is a pathological liar. She lies about everything, you know, everything that she says. She tells everybody different things. She's she's a master manipulator. If you watch any of the videos, it's like she deflects and she has no remorse. Even when she gets caught, she acts like nothing. It's it's the most bizarre personality. And, you know, when you are being asked when you on national TV, like, where are your children? And she just like. It's like nothing. There's no guilt. There's like, oh, I'm shit. I'm caught. There's nothing. Lori also says in August, you should give all of your love. Oh, this is her kind of giving a little guilt trip to Chad. You should give all of your love and attention to your wife and family. I just can't be in the way anymore. She's trying to guilt trip him. If things change, then we can talk because she's already like got rid of her husband. So she's like probably angling for Chad to get rid of his wife. But we have nothing until things change anyway. So that's such a manipulation there. And then she says the pain is unbearable. And Chad replies, you're right. 
uh, put me aside until things change. Yes, the pain is unbearable. I feel us so alone, too. We are surrounded by terrestrial relatives that are simply obstacles. I'm so sick of it. Oh, my God. All right. So, September 3rd, Alex, the brother, texts Lori, and he tells Lori, I'm so proud of you. No more Zs, meaning zombies. And Lori says, we are trying to get to the bottom of what needs to, what we need to do to eliminate them completely. I'm sure you will be told also. And Alex says, excellent. So this is September 3rd. September 9th, we are pretty sure, is when Tali is killed. Because Alex Cox's cell phone was located in the yard of Chad Daybell's property for approximately two hours that morning. And like I said, Chad DeBell texted his wife, Tammy, claiming that he shot a raccoon and buried it in the pet cemetery on the property. And the day before is when they took a picture of JJ and Tylee and with their uncle, Alex. And then s- skipping forward to September 22nd, JJ was less seen alive at the Kennedy Elementary School. Lori's friend, Melanie Gibbs and another one were staying with Lori that weekend because they were all moving up there to Rexburg to live. There's this whole other world. To be in the 144. To be in the 144. There's this whole thing where a lot of them divorced their husbands and then married each other and then to move up there. And I'm not, I mean, we just don't have time to get into that. There's plenty of information about this, but Melanie was up there and she saw JJ, but JJ was asleep and Alex was carrying him like into his bedroom in the apartment. This is September 23rd and it is uh, the next day that um, Lori told Melanie that JJ had to be taken away because he was becoming a zombie. So they think that either JJ was already dead when Alex was carrying him. Or mm. when they dug JJ up, they found Rehypnol in mm, his yeah. blood. So he was, <laughs> after Melanie saw him, um, you know, and Melanie asked about JJ, that's what Lori told her. And why you would not, as a human being, knowing what zombie meant goes exact, like straight to the police. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And this is September. That day, Alex Cox's cell phone was located in Chad DeBell's backyard again, and Lori called J.J. school and said that she would be homeschooling him and he would no longer be coming to the school. And then October 3rd, Chad sent a message to Lori saying that he had big news about Tammy. He told Lori that not fully sure of the timing for a removal, but once her actions verify the difference, I don't want to wait. October 19th was the day that Tammy Daybell was murdered. Lori and Chad were exchanging messages literally that day. And Lori said to Chad, not fun without you. How are you doing is the question. And then Chad says, I'm hanging in there, but I'll call you soon. Uh, At the end of October, October 23rd, Lori texted Chad and said, I had a bad dream about Alex Cox, her brother. Uh Oh, Make sure he is still him and protect him. He'll be the one they use to get to both of us. All of this alone Uh, time is not good for him. On November 5th, mm -mm. like two weeks after Tammy is murdered, Lori and Chad get married on a beach in Hawaii. I found the pictures. They are wearing full lays. Oh, yeah. White outfit. Mm-hmm. So they playing are, ukuleles. Yeah. Hawaiian beach with the rings. After bought, they murdered their children. Bought from and, and, and their spouses. spouses. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're wearing the rings th- that they bought from mm-hmm. Charles's account. That's what I was looking at when you were looking at mm-hmm. me. Lori is dancing and mm-hmm. giggling and Chad oh, is yeah. playing like, the ukulele. Ukulele. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was November 5th, December 8th. Melanie Gibbs. And Lori, and this is recorded, they have a fucking god off. So, mm-hmm. Melanie. The podcaster with her. Mm-hmm. Melanie is the podcaster mm-hmm. with her. She calls Lori. She's now working with the police because she realizes probably she's protecting herself. Mm-hmm. She's like, I don't want to go down for this, but she fucking should because she knows. Mm-hmm. She knows what has been going on. But now she's working the police. She called Chad and Lori and recorded it. And you can listen to the recording. And on that recording, they are like trying to out scripture the other person. Uh, and, you know, Melanie is like 
confronting her about what's going on. And Lori just is not emotional whatsoever. And it is literally like, well, you know, the Lord said blah, 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 blah. And then Lori's reply. I mean, it is such a juvenile middle school, like you said, um, you know. Na na na. Well, the God said na na na. Well, you're not Christ like na na na. And Melanie calls her basically Satan, and Lori's no. like, "You calling me Satan?" She's like, "How?" She's like, "You know me," and the, and all of this stuff, and and I mean, it's it's all of this back and forth about the scripture, and so much less about like what the fuck. Did you do with the children? Mm. You murdered the children. The children were really very, and this is the bizarre yeah, thing. When you watch the documentary, the children, like the outrage, the people that should care outside of Kay and Larry Woodcock, the grandparents, the outrage the other adults should have about this whole situation is simply fucking not there. And mm. it's so enraging. But they have this conversation and I just feel like they're living in such a fantasy land that if they would have fucking just played D and D as kids mm. and not felt like it's from the devil, then they wouldn't be doing the devil's work as like adults. Mm. It is such fantasy. It is so juvenile. It is so stupid and it's deadly. December 11th, <clears throat> Chad Cox, oh, uh, not Chad. Alex Cox died suddenly at 51 of natural causes. They uh-huh. indicate that there was a blood clot, but they also said there were, he could have overdosed by um, Narcan, which is found in the system, which is, I think, a drug to help people who are addicted to drugs. Narcan. Narcan. Yeah. But Chad, a couple of weeks beforehand, had given him his patriarchal blessing. You know, Chad's always upheld Alex as the protector of Lori, and Chad was the dirty man. Chad was, you know, the guy that did did most of the killing, um, from what we understand. He also told, um, not Chad, sorry, Alex. He also told Alex that he had done a great deal and that Alex would know when it is time to go to the other side. Oh, they do know that Chad called Alex and gave him another blessing the day that he died, like hours before he died. At this point, related to Lori Vallo Daybell, Daybell, sorry, fucking that name. <laughs> Daybell. Um, Daybell. These are the number of people that are dead. And we haven't even talked about her oldest sisters. So Stacy Cox, her oldest sister, is dead. Under weird circumstances. Uh, Joe Ryan, husband number three, is dead. Charles Vallow, husband number four, is dead. Tammy Daybell is dead. Alex Cox is dead. J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan is dead. You know, December 12th, they exhumed Tammy's body. They, like, say she was murdered. On the um, hidden true crime podcast that I've been binge-watching, her cousin, Lori's cousin, gets on there and she dishes the dirt. And she's like, Lori got everything she ever wanted as a child. She's like, if you went against Lori, she made your life miserable. She, her cousin, um, Megan, said that when she got married, Lori was one of her bridesmaids. And she said, this is the color of the bridesmaid dress. And Lori went and changed the color of the bridesmaid dress and like told everybody the color that Lori went wanted. (laughs) And then so she's like, so I've got like all of my decor and everything clashed with, you know, the color that Lori picked out for her bridesmaid's dress. So it was like all of this stuff that she came came about. Um which is weird behavior. And she's like, you know, they just. Well, that's narcissistic. It's just she came from a, a narcissistic family, actually. And it, it's just really weird. Like th- her oldest sister, Stacy, who died, she was diabetic. But I don't there was something weird about that. Um, I don't think they got her help. And there was a lot of body shaming. And she ended up being like 60, anorexic. She ended up being like 60 pounds and diabetic. And she was sick 
So Alex, I think, stayed home. I don't know. The rest of the family went to Hawaii on vacation. This is when Lori was young. Her sister ended up, like, fucking dying while they were on vacation, and the family did not come home. Mm. The hell? And they were basically... Had well, her already, parents still alive through all this? Yeah, it seems like they would be because she's not that no, old. No, and they're interviewed on on the um mm-hmm. on the thing on the um documentary. She has other siblings. The one that's the twin, right? Didn't he have a twin? Yeah, or? Adam. Yeah, um, and there's interviews with Adam as well. It seems like a, some of of the siblings like kind of got out and out of like the radar or the circumference of the family influence or whatnot. And there's some fucking shit about her dad, too. It's just all really bad. So I highly encourage you, if you're interested in any of this shit, um, to go listen to Hidden True Crime podcast. Um, also, the uh, they cover the uh, was it Murdahls from mm-hmm. South oh Carolina, which is like some fucking shit, Another too. Another level. Mm-hmm. Another too. level. And they compared the two. But they, yeah. st- they started out with Lori Vallow the doomsday mom and if this has turned your guts as much as it's turned mine then um i highly uh suggest you try some tomato aspect <laughs> and, and get a good and we'll do something cleanser. a little lighter next and we'll do yeah, something we'll do a little some bit lighter next but all very interesting and fucked up it's just amazing sad. very sad and ex- seeing the pictures extremely is really sad. sad but seeing the kids not that it wasn't sad before, but no. I try not to look at the phone all the time when you are talking. Yeah, and no. so I've waited it's so hard all these to. weeks to not look at them and her. Mm. And um, that brings another level. I mean, oh, when you see especially her, especially when it's so yeah. recent, too. Yeah. And, and it's, yes. it's, it's sad anytime you talk about true crime or death of children, of course, yes. and murder, especially by family members. Mm-hmm. But to be something so recent. And what I, when you said that about her sister and um, diabe- diabetes and mm-hmm. anorexia, I'm not going to lie. When I looked at the pictures of her daughter, I thought this mother did not like her daughter because she was did not look like her. Exactly. She was not a skinny blonde. She was not a skinny, mm-hmm. yes. And she was defiant and, and she and didn't I, behave. And, I know. It seemed like uh, that's why she could go ahead and like say she's evil. Like she's mm-hmm. a zombie. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. was calling Chad shit. Mm-hmm. And Chad, anything, the, any obstacle that got in Chad's way or Lori's way, Chad automatically, mm-hmm. as the part of the Godhead, deemed them a demon and they needed to be dealt with. And really, it's mm-hmm. it's so, to me, it's just so unbelievable that people, I mean, it's so recent. Mm-hmm. And that people act this way and that those two precious babies had so many adults mm-hmm. around Love them it. that did not protect them. And and we're not talking about like out of poverty or or drug use or anything like that. It is they it's just so sad and I feel for them so much. So I'm mm-hmm. sorry to, to bring everybody down. Next week we'll do Next something week, lighter. We'll, we'll, well. Just, It'll be two weeks from the time we record this. <laughs> right. Well, you know, the next time you listen to this, mm-hmm. hopefully we'll be talking about. We will make you pee yourself. <laughs> exactly. Laughter. Laughter. <laughs> Thanks y'all so much for listening to us and we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.